and now we have Zig together with Frank Moritz again on the on the stage, and we have our friends from Belden, uh, Thomas, who will also present uh, the latest um, solutions in bringing SPE to the field and in today's communication networks. So welcome on stage. Okay, so I think it's my part to start. And uh, well, I'm Frank from SIGAG. And uh, okay, let's start with a short overview over what we are doing. And our universe is uh, all about sensor solutions. And as mentioned before, this can be cameras, this can be light switches, this can be everything. And sensors are used really all over the world in nearly all industries. So that is our world where I'm coming from. And to have a deeper look inside, <clears throat> the range of what we are doing is, on the one hand, very simple sensors, inductive sensors, optoelectronic sensors, cameras, LiDAR scanners, uh, safety grids, and of course, also gateways, edge gateways, uh, and uh, analytics uh, so solutions at the end. Both for the standard world, which we have in blue, on the other hand, the yellow world, which is the safety world for functional safety uh, applications at the end. And leading to the, uh, let's say, context of, of communication and SPE, yes, all the sensors have communication today and board. And let's see in the future what we can do on, and how we can implement, let's say, also Ethernet and single pair Ethernet into these devices. If it comes to the sensors, they are not alone. Sensors are working in environment, industrial environment. This could be robot applications, this could be logistic applications, uh, conveyor applications, and you can imagine that the sensors have to talk to a PLC, to a control system, or even one sensor to another one. And communication of these sensors is everywhere. Beside the sensors, beside uh, PLCs or control system on a vertical uh, approach and uh, yeah, communication is the binding element to talk and to exchange information uh, within the sensors. So, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Frank. Yeah, good morning also from my side. My name is Thomas and I would like to give a brief introduction into the Belden world. So what are we doing? So what is our purpose? So to build the foundation for the digital world. And Belden is active in three key segments. One is industrial automation solutions, focused, focusing on industrial 4.0, um, bringing industrial automation to different target verticals. Second one is smart buildings. So all about building automation, making the life in buildings more easy, more convenient. And the third part is broadband and 5G. So Belden is supplying the solutions to facilitate uh, a modern cellular infrastructure. But today, the focus shall be about industrial automation solutions. And here, this slide depicts what Belden can do. And our mission is to bring digitization across the different verticals we are in with industrial automation solutions. We have four target verticals. Um, the first one is discrete, so discrete automation applications. Second one is process, so oil and gas business, for example, but also chemical installations. Third one is energy power, transmission, and delivery. And the fourth one is mass transit along the track, for example, but also rolling stock applications. And where do we play? Basically, we cover the full needs of the automation pyramid. So from the field level, at the bottom of the, um, on the field, uh, we supply with our core brands such as Belden, AlphaWire, Hirschmann, but also Lambeck Automation and OTN Systems, the full spectrum of networking needs. From the field level, up to the management level where the IT plays. All right, so that was a brief in, um, introduction to our two different companies. Now let's focus uh, on the topic of today. Single pair Ethernet technology, the basic overview. But what does the technology do? And first of all, why is SPE important? Maybe let's start with what SPE means. So first of all, single pair Ethernet, the, the name suggests it already. It's one pair uh, of a cable instead of four. So that means, first of all, 
um, decreased cost, simplified installation. But the big news, what is really different is it, it uh, shifts the limit of what, what is possible to build in terms of reach. So we can achieve up to 1,000 meter with single-pair Ethernet, where traditional Ethernet, four-pair Ethernet, has its limits at 100 meters. What does it mean as well? New connectors with less context, so easier to, easier to install, smaller footprint. But it also means that we will introduce new switches supporting SPE, and it's all standardized in an IEEE standard. So what will SPE do? What are the benefits? I mentioned it already briefly. So first of all, we can optimize overall costs due to the fast installation. Then look at the automation pyramid today with all those different PLC gateways in between, protocol conversion, that all goes away because you can speak transparent Ethernet to the field level. And last but not least, um, we can offer a high bandwidth replacing existing old and not secure field buses. Yeah, then a brief look at the market uh, here on the right hand side of that slide. What is the expected market growth? So we really expect that the market is taking off. So until 2030, we expect that 40 million end nodes speaking single pay Ethernet will be installed, replacing, replacing traditional field buses, but also uh, replacing to a certain extent a standard four pay Ethernet where single pay Ethernet can provide more cost effectivity, more cable reach, and so on and so on. A brief overview here regarding the standards and the market relevance. So today, I, I would like to focus more on, on the bottom of that graph here, the 10-bit technology, because with that so-called 10-base T1L standard, we can really play out a lot of benefits. As I said, traditional Ethernet kept at 100 meter, meters, with 10-base T1L, we can extend the, the range up to 1,000 meters. And with that, all those different standards, 100 megabit, 1 gigabit, so single pay Ethernet is a set of standards that can deliver on certain needs. We can address uh, four core verticals where we have certain needs. So the first one is, for example, building automation, uh, where single pay Ethernet provides thinner cables, easier installation. Second one, process industries. Look, for example, at um, gas pipelines or um, oil applications, chemical applications, where you have traditional field buses with long distances. There, 10 base T1L with the one kilometers can provide a very good solution. Another segment, intralogistics. So again, data transmission over long distance with one kilometer is here the core value proposition. And the fourth one that I would like to highlight, robotics. So uh, there you have moving parts and so on. And here, lower weight, thinner cable to save weight, space on or inside the robot. So a few words about conversion possibilities. I mentioned it briefly already, but what can it really replace? Where is the technology heading to? And here on the left-hand side, you always see the current technology and where the future technology single pay Ethernet can go bring to. So current technology, the first point, standard Ethernet, 100 base TX, 1,000 base T with short cable length. Here, single pay Ethernet, with the different standards can already provide a very good solution. Limited reach, but as I said, two um, pairs instead of four, providing a lot of value. The second point, field buses in the field. So for example, Profibus, DP, Modbus, CC Link, all those different um, field buses floating around there and building automation in discrete automation. Here, single pair Ethernet um, can provide, uh, with the T1L standard, more reach again, but it can be also used to power the end devices with PODL, power over data line. So we don't need to run any additional power supply to the sensor. And last but not least, um, we, you can also look at different bus systems, IO-Link, RS485, and even there, single pair Ethernet ca can provide a solution with the so-called standard T1S, providing multi-trip bus-like architectures, fulfilling this, the need of, for example, European Cyber Resilience Act. Um, this is also a core value proposition of the technology where it can help to come to le legislative requirements like cybersecurity, IEC 62443 is here the big standard which is affecting a lot of the industry at the moment. And with that, next slide. 
Seems that the pointer, ah, now it's working, very good. Here, you, you can see an example of a single pair Ethernet architecture, how it typically looks like. On the feed level, control level, distribution, and management level. And here, I've populated that pyramid with, with some Bell devices, which I will further highlight in the second part of, of today's uh, presentation. So at the field level, we have just launched a new concept study called Line H, and that is the perfect device to connect IO-Link sensors and actuators on the field um, to an IO-Link master and hook them up to the Ethernet world. Cost-effective, lightweight, and it speaks single-pair Ethernet. So extended reach, one kilometer. And then you have that uh, T1L link going up. Where do you connect it? And also where Ben provides now a, a first switch, a single-pair Ethernet switch, light-managed switch, we call it Beetle. And that Beetle device can aggregate all those T1L links from the field. Speaking Ethernet IP, for example, and with that, it can be connected to a PLC with then either single-pair Ethernet or standard Ethernet. And going up, of course, you have the distribution layer. Ben, with its Searchman brand, uh, provides a lot of solutions there. But of course, we have always the cloud also coming in the picture with technologies such as OPC UA, uh, providing direct access to information floating around in the field. And with that, I'm handing back to Frank, yeah, highlighting more the field level. <laughs> so, as Thomas mentioned, so we have the automatic pyramid and we see that SPE is everywhere. It's on the cloud level, it's on the control level, it's on the factory level. And uh, this is why SPE is, a, an, let's say, an, an, a puzzle uh, in the system or communication architecture, uh, which is uh, built here in the automation uh, pyramid. And at the very low end, uh, or at the bottom, there are the sensors, and that's my world. <laughs> and of course, we have the sensors. These sensors uh, generate the data or information, which can be used for different services. <clears throat> and uh, as you mentioned before, there are some IO-Link sensors. Yes, so that's the really small ones, where uh, they can uh, convert it at the, at the end to Ethernet architecture or SPE. But on the other hand, there are also the direct uh, Ethernet-based sensors you can see on the lower right side, which Ethernet is built in a sensor. So, uh, Thomas also mentioned before, robots. <clears throat> that is one of the target industries. So if it comes to robot applications or end-of-arm tooling of, of robots, <clears throat> there are a lot of sensors on the arm of, the, of a robot. And you can imagine space is a really is issue. There are space constraints. And there are also constraints in, uh, in weights. So we need communication, which is powerful. But on the other hand, low weight and uh, low diameters and have to be flexible. And SPE is exactly the right thing uh, to do this. <clears throat> so another application where also SPE is very important with the benefits is, uh, let's say, electronic assembly machines. Usually these are very small machines. Uh, not too much space, but a lot of these sensors, namely light and proximity switches, which have to be connected to, uh, let's say, to an edge gateway or to a PLC. And therefore also uh, SPE is the, the right choice and gives uh, new opportunities to design such applications in, in, history, um, in history, industry. Sorry. So space and weight, that's two of the main benefits uh, for sensors for SPE. And uh, in a nutshell, we can see, okay, there are other benefits. Uh, on the right hand, you see the devices, as I mentioned before, space and uh, weight is a thing. Additionally, if, we come, if it comes to SPE with a power over data link, the Poodle, then a new benefit is, is there, which means we have combined power and communication in one cable. We don't need two cables, we don't need two connectors, but only one connector. That's the main benefit <coughs> for, the, for the devices. On the cable side, okay, there is, as mentioned before, smarter cables, less diameter, less weight. Benefits here also for the installation process in a, in a machine. And the third thing is, if it comes to the other side of the uh, sensors, which are normally the switches, <clears throat> so SPE can do miniaturization and therefore building smarter and smaller switches, which maybe is a, a big issue if a, such a switch is, uh, let's say, mounted in, in, in a cabinet. 
So at the end, as a summary, connectivity is for sensors is very, very important. And if we have that connectivity and it's an Ethernet-based connectivity, then the main benefit is, yes, we can have all the services, the web-based services, the Internet-based services, direct running on a sensor without any gateways, any routers or something like that. So namely, we can use OPC UA directly on a sensor, we can use JSON-based REST APIs, or even MQ MQTT, and we can use all these communication services together with security, combined with security. And at the end, SPE enables sensors to have a seamless communication, let's say up to the cloud, IIoT services, together with security. And that's a real, real benefit on the sensor world. Okay, Thomas, I think that was my part. And oh, <laughs> we're already at the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you, your audience, watching our topics and discussions about uh, SPE industry. Yeah, thanks a lot, also from my side. <laughs>